Online. Okay, three of you got it. And uh, <laughs> because there's a blessing in there if you honor God. And he said, if you will be, read this, if you will read Psalm 1, you'll find hope in there and assurance, and it would encourage you in your walk. Now, point number two. Let's, let's talk about our prayer today. The question that comes up is how, when, and where. I don't know if you have a time frame, uh, different time frames where you will uh, pray. I know I do. And uh, I heard someone else share with me today uh, what, how they spend their mornings, their afternoons, and their evenings. Ah, that's good. I bring my own water. It's small. All right, so let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 5, and listen to what's being said. And when you pray, okay, there's a time frame, right? When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. Now, I want to encourage you to understand these, all the Bible, black, uh, the red lettering or the black uh, writings of the Bible are very important. But this is Jesus laying out a pattern, a pattern for us so that we may understand that these things are important to our spiritual life. But when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. Where is he? Heaven. In a secret place. Say secret. 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 He sees all things. Amen? <coughs> and, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Now, I, uh, 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 excuse me, Dave was in Philippians 4, and it talks about prayer in there, offering your request up to the Lord. And uh, it's important that you have that foundation of different scriptures or thoughts speaking about how to pray, when to pray, and how it will accomplish God's will. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your request be made known unto God. See, God is always listening, and He's always listening to those who will set time aside, and they will come and they will offer up praise to His name. Uh, and, and in verse 7, And when you pray, do not use vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they will be uh, they will be heard for their many words. Well, I've learned that, under, uh, the, my understanding there is you don't have to pray in King James. Uh, you don't have to pray in NIV or any particular uh, uh, translation. Just be yourself. When you're talking to the Lord, say, Lord, thank you that I can set this time aside and be with you, and I know you're going to speak to me and you're going to reveal to me the things I need to do for each and every day. I do believe that. Remember, uh, Jesus said, only believe. All things are possible to those who believe. See, what I'm doing here is trying to encourage you, make it personal to your life, that you love the Lord. Remember, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has, has in store for those who love Him. You're declaring your love for God when you set time aside and to, in that secret place. It's just between you and God. No one else can hear you. You know, here you're, you're like a little mouse. You don't, you don't speak up a whole lot. But when you get in different locations, you'll speak up. Pam, give me a little bit more of that food. Or come over here and uh, here's the cakes and so forth and other things and, and then you'll, you'll, we'll hear from you. And that's good. But 
it's more important that you speak to the to God because that's communion with Him. You're declaring your love for Him. And so don't repeat your, your, your thoughts over and over. Once you ask, and that's why it's good to have a pad of paper and uh, a notebook. Janice bought me three more uh, these little notebooks. And uh, I said, Jan, I have a stack of them. She said, well, you'll use them. I use them all the time. So here, the power of God's word, Luke 8, 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. I had a gentleman say to me this week, how can you memorize all that, all those scriptures and so forth? And I had to think about that. I don't sit down to memorize the word of God. What I do is I read it over and over and over. I get done, I go through this part, and then I go back and I go over it again, and I'll pray about it. Before I started this morning, I said, Lord, uh, Holy Spirit, help me to just take in what I'm reading today so I can share with your people to encourage them in their daily walk with you. And uh, I trust that he is doing that. And he's giving me the strength, strength to uh, uh, give you encouragement and how you should live your life. Um, and he, he, he tells us, don't be like the hypocrites. Jesus was hard on him on the hypocrites of that of that of his time. Uh, and again, remember, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask. Well, why do I have to ask if you already know? Because he says so. You need to ask what you have. If you have a request, ask him and he will uh, uh, take that and he will answer it in his time. Timing. Remember, he knows and he cares. Amen? Amen? He knows and he cares. God cares about the details of our life. And uh, he, he wants us to be uh, always searching him. That, that was the music this morning. Seek after the Lord. Search for him. You will find him. In John, and here's another three uh, chapters that you need to read, because we'll be going there uh, down the road. Uh, in the days ahead is the Gospel of John 14, 15, and 16. And here's my instruction. Do it often. Just don't read it one time and you can say, well, Pastor, I read that last month. You know, every, these months come around, especially uh, in the winter months, we have plenty of time to think on the Word of God and meditate on Scripture. Uh, in Joshua 1.8, when, when Joshua was taking over, God spoke to Joshua and he said, you get alone and you meditate on my word before you open your mouth. Before you say anything, you renew your mind. You get yourself prepared. And uh, you uh, be ready to move when I tell you. Waiting and being patient Keeping yourself in a place of being thankful. Give praise. Always give praise. And I'll refer to that before we finish up here. Continually thanking Him for His goodness. No matter what you see, or what's going on, what's on the news, thank you, Lord, that you have all things under your control. Amen? Amen. He's, all things are in His hand. He can take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, our actions should always pursue what is good, both for yourself and for others. First, we're to practice it in our own homes, to our, our children, to our, our wives, our husbands, uh, thanking the Lord for uh, those that God has uh, in our families and giving uh, praise to His name. Acting, yeah, just as uh, uh, James wrote about being doers of the Word and not just hearers. And then over in 1 Thessalonians 5, our thought pattern should be this. As it is written, rejoice always in the Lord. Now I could give you the scriptures. Uh, this came to mind when I was talking to two gentlemen this week. I know texts and chapters and all. They don't. 
And this Bible, when it was written in Hebrew, wasn't in chapter and verse. You're just to give the, the uh, how it speaks to you from your heart, and you don't have to say uh, chapter 5, verse 14. You can just tell them what I'm going to tell you now. As it is written, and uh, it says, we are to rejoice in the Lord always, and that we also are to pray without ceasing. What does that mean? Well, when I'm driving down the road, I told, told you before, I'll be speaking to God, thanking God, and uh, uh, going over different thoughts. And uh, The Holy Spirit brings these thoughts up for us to uh, meditate on. In Psalms 1, where it talks about meditating, my footnote there is that you speak these things to yourself. You're talking to yourself. Reminding yourself that God's word is true and it's working in, my, in your life. Jesus said in, in, in the word, it says, have faith in God. God is watching. He's working. He, he's, he's, he's calling you to uh, renew yourself in his presence. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not despise prophecy. Well, prophecy can encompass a whole lot of things. We hear prophecy in many different ways. We'll talk about that one day. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Is the word of God good? Yes. Hold fast to it. Make it part of your life. Make it your make how you make yourself up every day. You know, I know I prepare myself before coming here. I'm thinking about, Lord, let it flow freely so that the people can also help them to open up their hearts and their ears so that they may hear. Understand this. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. And he will draw out of you what you've put in you. And it becomes a reality. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. That's pretty simple. But then when the enemy comes and he attacks, you have to be able to recognize the, his uh, tactics. All right. I need more hands or I need a bigger pulpit. Our next uh, uh, thought here is the Word of God gives us assurance that God hears us when we pray. In the Amplified Bible, uh, we read uh, in Psalm 5.3, if you want to write this down, In the morning you will hear my voice, O Lord. In the morning I prepare a prayer of sacrifice for you, and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. How many of you believe that God truly speaks to you? Amen. You may not hear Him, but He may speak in a very still voice, but if you're paying attention, he'll direct you, he'll keep you from harm, he'll keep you from the enemy. If you acknowledge that he is uh, present and he's working in your life. In Psalm 34, 17, it says, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their distress and troubles. You're not alone. You're not alone. And when the enemy attacks, remind him, it is written. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, now, you, don't, you just say that to him, 5.21, that uh, he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, we are righteous. When God looks at us, he sees the blood of the Lamb that has cleansed us from all our sins and that we stand in His presence because of Jesus, His Son, and we have accepted Him. And then in uh, Psalms 116, 1 and 2, we find comfort. I love the Lord because He has heard, and now He hears my voice and my supplications. I could sleep in. But I've come to a place of, I treasure that early morning. Now some of you might not be 
uh, early risers, and that's fine. But you can start, always start your day with <coughs> praise unto the Lord. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. When I pray, I pray every day for my children and my grandchildren. I say their names, and then I say, Janice and I, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord <clears throat> all the days of our life. That's my prayer, and that's my destination to be honoring the Lord every day that I live. Now we have a model prayer here, starting in verse uh, uh, 9, and uh, uh, we're going to read that and listen to what it's saying. Verse 9, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, a place. All of these thoughts should guide our prayers. Uh, in heaven, hallowed be your name. <clears throat> your, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So when you look at that prayer, he's not saying pray this prayer every morning. He wants you to commune with him from your heart. But you know these things. Lord, thank you for the provision that I have. Thank you, Lord, for the home that you have given me. You know, I hear of people and I, I contributed to prayer. That things in my home function well because I pray over it. We have a nice washing machine and dryer. How many of you have one? Yeah. I pray over that because my wife uses them often. And I do not want them to break down. I want them to function just the way they were designed. And uh, I thank the Lord for all my appliances. I thank the Lord for my home He has supplied. And I, I spent time this morning looking at a ministry called Chosen, the Chosen People of Israel, of all, all the different people that are returning to Israel, and all the people that, uh, all the Jews that are accepting Jesus as their uh, Messiah, Yahshua, and uh, their Savior. That is a move of God. This was prophesied in the Old Testament, and it's being filled being fulfilled this day and this hour. And that, that is the sign of the coming of the Lord. And he has talk, spoken to the Jewish people. He said, you will come back to your land and I will pull you back with a hook and things will begin to happen quickly as we see how God will work in Israel. So keep your eye on Israel, pray for Jerusalem and know that God is working in that manner. All right. Now, Dave covered this, but I'm going to cover it again. He said it a little different. Verse 14 and 15. And I want to make a statement here. Don't even come before the Lord to pray unless you've spent time searching your heart, examining yourself. If you have unforgiveness, or if you have bitterness towards anyone, forgive them. Has God forgiven you? Yes. yes. You know of a lot of different things that you did before you became a Christian and that you brought to the cross and the Lord said, I forgive you. I cleanse you. And so, unless you're willing to forgive others, their trespasses, you need, unless you're willing to do that, don't expect God to forgive you. Keep short accounts. Now what I mean by that. If something happens, someone steps on your toe, toes, and they were probably, if they're Christian, they're probably aiming for your heart, but they missed and they hit your toes. Don't get all upset and yell at them or get angry. I don't know about you. Did any of you get angry during the week? We all do. We all kind of go off in uh, some of these areas, and we need to be thinking about what the Lord says 
And these foundational truths will help you. In verse 14 it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. What do you say to that? Amen. 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 Trespasses, meaning anger, bitterness, faults, unforgiveness. You don't have to go back to a month or two or three months. Just move on and say, Lord, I, I forgive. There's anyone that has come across my path and their name comes up in your time of prayer. Just say, Lord, bless them. Lord, forgive me that I would hold a grudge against anyone. Verse 15. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Isn't that clear? You must forgive. Now, I, I can't think of anyone, and I'm not going to look for it. The devil said, well, what about so-and-so? I forgive him. What about this? You, I'll tell you, this. you're going to be rejected by people, especially if you talk about Jesus. They're going to reject you. They're going to say, well, that's good for you. But uh, that's your understanding. Especially if you talk with people that are of uh, uh, different beliefs. And uh, I, I'm dealing with one right now. And if anyone has the answer to this, uh, people wanting to go to purgatory before they go to heaven. Such nonsense. I said, would you please find that scripture for me? I kind of know where they're going to go. Uh, it's found in Luke where... They had Lazarus and the, the rich man, but it's a weak argument. <laughs> and, uh, and they said, yeah, I'll dig that out. Okay, good, now we'll have a conversation. I said, why would you want to stop over in hell before you go to heaven? <laughs> it says to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of God. Now your body will be in the grave, but your spirit and your soul will be with the Lord. Yes. Yes. At least that's what I believe. And I can prove it by the Word of God. And by the way, if you have questions or thoughts or something I say and you want some clarification, please, please feel free after the service to come up and talk to me. Amen? Amen. You don't have to be, be afraid to, you know, if you have questions or doubts or something or you need a little help. That's what we're, this is a school of learning. Right? God has put this all together, we come here, we hear the word, and uh, we hear it through song. We, hear, we should be hearing testimonies. We'd really love to hear some different testimonies of the time and the season that you came to the Lord where God touched your life and you want to tell others about Jesus. That's for that chosen ministry. Just type that into your, your uh, phone or whatever you use to go on Google or whatever. I'm not that up to date on that stuff. And you'll find some testimonies that will bless your heart. I was sitting there this morning in my chair bawling about how God moved. People saw the Lord. And he made himself visible to them. And that's what they needed in their life. And it transformed their life. So take time to meditate on these things. And here's my next instruction. Now listen closely, because this is what you've been waiting for. Would the music department please come up now? <laughs> Before I do, 